Hey, welcome back. We're on video 32. We're almost through. This is element two, the technician exam, sub element nine, bravo. Mostly some memorization now. What is a benefit of low SWR standing wave ratio? And that is reduced signal loss. So having reflected power is a bad thing it's lost in heat it could damage your radio you want reduced signal loss question two what is the most common impedance of coaxial cables used in amateur radio and that is 50 ohms everything you're going to hear is pretty much 50 ohms for the modern transceiver why is coaxial cable the most common feed line for amateur radio antenna systems it is easy to use and requires few special installation considerations. Now there are other types of feed line, but they're a little bit different, but coaxial cable is pretty easy to use. What is the major function of an antenna tuner or also known as an antenna coupler? Now an antenna tuner does not tune a uh, the, the antenna. It only matches the antenna and makes your radio happy. There's still going to be some loss in there, but it matches the antenna system impedance to the transceiver's output impedance. It makes your radio happy. What happens as the frequency of a signal in coaxial cable is increased? The loss increases. So the lower the frequency there's less loss and you can go look up your coaxial cable co types and look at charts and look at the signal loss based on certain frequencies and the higher you go the more loss there is so you you sometimes we have to balance cost versus performance question six which of the following RF connector types is most suitable for frequencies above 400 megahertz and that is the type N. And a type N is a very interesting connector. I mean, nothing special, but the type N is specifically engineered for frequencies above 400 megahertz. Which of the following is true of PL259 type coax connectors? Now a PL259 is the plug. That was the end that is usually on your coax. They are commonly used at HF and VHF frequencies. Which of the following is a source of loss in coaxial cable feed line? Well, I See, I like to say coax cable, but coaxial feed line. All of these choices are correct. These are all going to resu uh, result in a loss. That's water intrusion. Well, we talked about it in a section earlier. Lots of water. High SWR is going to be a source of loss. Multiple connectors in the line. So if you have to adapt to different connector types, then you're going to experience loss in those connectors. I think a decibel to one and a half decibels of loss is about what most people people factor in when you start having to make reductions and use adapters and all that. It's best if you could just run it straight from your rig to the antenna. So all of those choices are correct. Question number nine, what can cause erratic changes in SWR? I have seen this. I've seen this in these inexpensive cables. The braid gets broken right under here and starts to do some crazy things. Loose connections in the antenna or feed line. Even the connection from here to the B and C connector, if that is not a tight connection, if if the uh, center conductor is not making a good connection inside of this, then you're going to have some, some issues. Never a fun time there. What is the electrical difference between RG58 and RG213 coaxial cable? Now you can memorize this answer or you can go look at the data sheet if you like, but RG213 cable has less loss at a given frequency. Again, looking at 
the data sheets for these things, you can go check that out. Question 11, which of the following types of feed line has the lowest loss at VHF and UHF? I just had to take some of this down for a local ham because it broke. It had been years old and the center conductor was grounded against the braid. But air insulated hard line has the lowest loss at VHF and UHF. But that stuff, it is exactly as it sounds, it is hard line. It, the stuff that this guy had had to be about an inch and a quarter thick. It was big. So air insulated hard line is the best for VHF and UHF, especially if you need to make a pretty good run to it. What is standing wave ratio? That is a measure of how well a load such as our dunce load here, is matched to the transmission line and to your rig too. So when I put this on to my dummy load and hook it to my radio, this is 50 ohms. I'm going to see a one-to-one -one SWR, which means it's perfect. That is a measure of how well a load is matched to the transmission line. And now we're done with nine Bravo. We are almost done with this, guys, gals, hams, non-hams alike, future hams. We're almost there. I hope you're doing well with your practice tests. Like this video, subscribe to the channel for your support. Thank you so much, and 73 from W1RCP.